And it's really easy to pander to people and say, oh, we could just turn the wheels of time back and go back to the past, like what Trump is doing. We just, you know, go back to the age of um, American manufacturing in the 20th century. And we shouldn't be positioning ourselves in that way, not only because it's not true, but because it's not even fucking viable anymore, right? We have to embrace the cutting edge of the era and with all the implications that comes with that. I mean, that's the decisive significance of Marxism. I want to remind you guys that there had always been commun there had always been socialists and communists and there was feudal commun socialists and reactionary socialists, conservative socialists or whatever the fuck you want. And you know, I I want us to not lean in too much on the reaction to progressivism that I have had to lead right because i want people to know that marxism is not progressivism marxism is not progressive liberalism or whatever but i mean on the flip side end of the coin you know it's i want to tell you guys something both dugan and people like nick land influenced infrared it's not just dugan who's also you know himself brilliant right he's he's by he's by no means some kind of like archaic folk thinker but it's also nick land and then that's why one of the reasons i really want to work on this new video about russian cosmism and the soviet avant-garde is because uh i really want to do justice uh to that kind of aspect of marxism that may not be too familiar you know because let me tell you guys why sometimes I'm going to put this to you in the plainest way possible, right? And it's going to make sense like this. It's going to immediately make sense, and you're going to understand what I'm talking about. So when it comes to conservatism, right, we're always dealing with an excess. Now, what are conservative values? Raise a family, go in the real world, get a job, do the things that, you know, your father did and your father's father did. That's all fine and well. I'm not against that, right? The problem is when it comes to these online communities, these internet communities, there's just an excess you're dealing with, right? You can't really return to conservative authenticity when there's just this lingering excess which we want to somehow act upon, give expression to, give form to, and which we need to supplement this kind of conservative fantasy. And that's what it fucking is. It's a fantasy, right? And examples of that are how you go into like a fascist discord and pff, these are fucking degenerates. They have anime profile pictures and they're just like, you know, they're complete fucking degenerates. And you don't have any conservative authenticity there whatsoever. I mean, there's all, I mean, femboys are with swastikas is very common among the alt. I don't know. I don't even know what it's called. I mean, the alt, right? Whatever the fuck it is. You know, you have to understand there's an excess there that conservatism on its own cannot address. So what I'm really trying to tell you guys is that we need to address that excess. We need to address that extra thing, which is, I think, technological modernity, right? I think that's what it represents. It represents this kind of futurism, this excess alienation of technological modernity that doesn't allow us to return to our comfortable, cozy kind of conservative, you know, norms that we're familiar with. There's something alienating about the changes that are happening and one of the ways we cope with that alienation is by kind of like um, turning this immediate authenticity of conservative life uh, into some form of like uh, image. We turn it into an image that we have a fantasy of. And then all of a sudden you have furry conservatives and all of a sudden you have like all of these weird degenerates who get in on it because you can't just be the thing. You can't just... Be a normal fucking person who has a family and has these kinds of like basic norms of, uh, you know, family values, uh, traditional gender norms. I don't fucking know, like traditional sexual norms, whatever, uh, traditional aesthetic more, you know. So that's, I think, what the importance of the cutting edge is. 
And I think that's confused a lot of people. I think a lot of people look at me when I'm talking about how communism is inherently conservative. And it's like the dialectical aspect of that gets lost on them, right? And they're just trying, they're making it seem like I'm trying to say like, oh, well, communism. No, that's not what I'm fucking saying. I, you keep in mind the dialectic part of this. And it's, it's kind of like this structure Dugan calls archaeo modernity. It's this archaeo modern structure where the conservative aspect isn't because I'm trying to project this fucking fantasy of some wholesome, comfortable, and familiar thing. I'm trying to point out how the tragedy is that when we let our wildest excesses loose of imagining the future and having this kind of alienation, we run into some kind of imminent dialectical contradiction. And it's the reference of that contradiction that is the object of traditionalism and conservatism, not in the sense of the schools of thought of traditionalism like Julius Evola and all those kind of people, but just like the basic conservatism you have in non-Western countries or even, you know, in, in, in among conservative people in the West itself to a certain extent, right? But when you enter that kind of excess, which we have to deal with somehow, when you mirror that conservatism with some kind of like, in, like some kind of like fucking um, uh, artificial and imaginary form of replicating it, you end up with it like a uh, astute opposite, right? When you try to, so let me put it this way, right? It sounds kind of like schizo what I'm saying. It sounds really schizo, right? So I'm going to really simplify it for you, okay? So we begin with our normal family life. We begin with our everyday kind of sense of what's familiar and what's normal. And then we're faced with some kind of alienation that separates us from this immediacy, right? So then the thing you want to do is return to the immediacy, right? Well, how? How do you return to that immediacy? I do want to return to that. There is something true about the original thing we lost. The original human social bonds we lost. The original family life that we lost, right? All that kind of stuff. I agree. But you can't just pretend like the alienation didn't just fucking happen. It needs to be addressed somehow. And if you don't address it, this is what's going to happen. So you begin with your immediate family life, and then the alienation comes in. And then all of a sudden, you have no way of representing that original thing you used to have, normal family life, except through the very medium of that same alienation. It's like, we can't even represent um, the traditional past without using the internet anymore. We have to use YouTube videos and the internet and, and make movies and, and have these online Discord communities and all that kind of shit. And then, you know, we just kind of wink, wink, and then on the side, what? There's fucking degeneracy and furries. And, I mean, I think, you know, where I'm coming from here is that I am way more ultra-conservative than the right. I'm way more traditional and ultra-conservative than the right, than the right wing. I am genuinely, like, for example, I think a lot of right-wingers will say some shit like, uh, oh, anime and furries are degenerate, but they're only degenerate because they don't conform to my image of what a good family is. It's just all superficial images. And that's why on the side, no matter how much you call it fucking degenerate, you're still partaking in it. It's like there's like this pathological need to have an anime profile picture. And there's just this need to be tempted by the furry shit and all these degen, femboy, whatever the fuck. I'm a Stalinist. You know what a Stalinist means? It's not about the image. We are fundamentally traditional. We're not just replicating an image of tradition. We are arriving at the essence of what normal human norms are through the full exhaustion of technological and cultural modernity. We are going to fully embrace modernity. We're going to fully embrace that alienation. And from there, we are going to arrive at the basic limit upon which we define ourselves as human. That's where you're going to get 
basic human norms and shit from. Not from some idealized image that's comfortable and makes you feel warm and, and makes you kind of feel like you're, you're hugging your mom again or some shit, right? We gotta, we gotta be men here, right? And I feel like a lot of conservatism is just man-child shit. You know what I mean? Being a man means going through it, not retreating, not trying to react to it. Going through it. That's what Marx was saying about capitalist modernity. We got this capitalist modernity that's on the horizon and it's wiping everything out. What do we do? Are we just going to sit there and go, no, I'm going to protect my teddy bear. Don't touch my teddy bear, capitalism. No, we're going to say, we're going through it. We're going through it. You know what that means? In this degen fucking internet with all that OnlyFans shit and all that sick shit, what if we're looking at the wrong culprit? What if instead of saying shit like, oh, the problem is technology, the problem is the internet, the problem is these new social networks that change the way we're interacting, what if it's the opposite? What if it's the fact that we're idealizing the past too much? What if when we embrace the full power of the internet, when we embrace this digital age, when we embrace this fourth industrial revolution, when we embrace a real great reset, what if then the real power of the degen shit will be wiped away? What if when we fully embrace this fucking smart city bullshit, wherever the fuck they're talking about, living in pods, whatever, death stranding, fully embrace that shit, only fans will disappear. All that degen shit will fucking disappear. Right? It's the opposite culprit that's responsible for degeneracy. It's the opposite of what you think. It's not because of technology. The pro I'm, We have to learn from Nick Land's accelerationism. The problem with Amazon isn't that it's too big and it's too technologically transformative. Oh, let's go back to the past. Let's go back to... You know, no, we're not going back to the past. We're going to seize the Amazon means of production and we're going to go forward. You want to end this furry shit? You know, that's what furries are. And that's just the biggest example of degeneracy, by the way. But they're trying to preserve something that's destroyed and dead. Let's accept this future with our sober senses and let's welcome the wisdom of the past when it authentically discloses itself to us. But let's not artificially worship and artificially idealize the past. Remember the lesson from Marx. We have to go through this process and only when we go through the process are we going to be able to authentically arrive at the true essence of the past. You understand? And I feel like this is an aspect of infrared that has been forgotten. Because of the war I've been waging against leftists, and because of the reaction I've gotten from these fucking leftists, the whole aspect of this new era was lost. You gotta understand our original aesthetic, guys. We were not these people who, like, we were not trads in a you know in a common sense like where we just like oh let's go back to the shitty old european architecture or something we like zaha hadid we are like kanye west futurists we we're on ps5 energy that's where we were that's where we were from the very fucking beginning you know and i feel like that's been totally forgotten and i myself have been a fucking culprit especially because i've been on twitch for a year right and twitch it's like, it's so, so like cutting edge that, you know, for me, it's like, okay, I have to do the opposite of that. And I have to like, be like the force of conservatism. And that's what makes it based, right? But now I feel like we can be more well-rounded. We don't have to be one-sided anymore. And I could tell you, we got to like, I'm taking Twitch with me. Like Twitch banned me, but I'm taking it with me here. So we have both. We got to have both that cutting edge and a respect and veneration for the wisdom of the past that's not based on idealized images but is based on something concrete and human you understand but yeah we've always been kanye west futurists we've always been ps5 futurists we've always been zaha hadid 
futurists, where we were always looking toward the future, embracing the future. And uh, I'm sick of that, like, I'm sick of that man-child type of wavelength that's going to attract people who just want something familiar. I want you to be alienated. I don't want you to find this shit familiar. I want you to be alienated from it. I want you to feel alienated. Alienation's good. Alienation's the best thing that's ever... You know what I mean? You got to you got to be a man in this world. You can't just be a fucking man child forever and and because you know it's it's a brutal brutal thing on the internet, you know? Being able to embrace the alienation of the internet as the ground of new freedom, that's how you destroy the evil. That's how you destroy the degen shit, you know? What is more Let me tell you this. The dude who's on Discord. Oh, Discord kitten, watch anime with me. That's a dude who's taking something beautiful and shitting it up with their sweaty, you know, musty ass. And I'm saying, why don't we embrace that shiny cutting edge instead? You know what I mean? Why don't we embrace that shining cutting edge instead? And I'm not saying I'm not saying it in an avant-garde sense, right? I'm just saying it in a sense of there's a future ahead of us, and instead of running away from it, we should be at the forefront of it. We should be embracing it. We should be at the forefront.